A new study shows plant-based meat alternatives provide fewer amino acids than the actual meat-based um, product that they're frequently compared to. So what does this mean for people who are eating plant-based meat alternatives? I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, and I think this is so important because these plant-based meat alternatives are being promoted as being equivalent from a protein-to-protein -protein basis as steak or as lamb or as, you know, the actual, actual real meat equivalent. But this study shows they're not. And it doesn't mean you can't get the protein you need from them, but we have to be aware about what the differences are because if we're search, if we're if we're trying to um, hit a certain goal of protein, it's probably going to have to be higher in terms of the inputs from the plant-based meat alternative. Now, look, there's lots of other th discussions around these plant-based meat alternatives. Are they really better for the environment? There's lots of you know, fossil fuels that go into the, the um, factories that have to promote them. They're highly processed foods. They're, they have a ton of different ingredients. Um, and they're very different from just the simple, you know, no ingredient <laughs> animal-based product that is what we've evolutionary grown up eating. You can see my bias. I will stop there because I don't want to get into that. But what I do want to get into is the protein amount. So, the study was called Plasma Amino Acid Appearance and Status of Appetite Following a Single Meal of Red Meat or a Plant-Based Meat Analog, a randomized crossover clinical trial published in the Current Developments in Nutrition. Now, this is a great study for a couple of different reasons. And one is they're not just looking at, you know, taking the, the what was it, Beyond Burger, Beyond Meat, and analyzing how much protein is in it and comparing that to how much protein is in a steak. Instead, they're having people ingest, actually eat the product and measuring the amount of you know, amino acids that they can detect in their blood. And that's what we really care about, right? We don't care about what's in the product. We care about what your body is absorbing um, and using. So they didn't take the next step to see you know, how much is actually being put into muscle synthesis. Um, but they did measure how much is in the blood. And that's a critical point because what they found was it's less than what's in the actual burger. And that makes sense because we know a lot of these plant proteins have less absorption, less bioavailability. Um, and that's key because if you want to eat, you know, 100 grams of protein per day, that's based on highly available, high quality bioavailable protein, which is basically steak, eggs, chicken, lamb, etc right? But that's not the same if you're eating a pea protein based product or, you know, these um, industrial made highly processed products, a hundred grams of protein is that does not equal a hundred grams of protein to meat. Now, if it's a pure soy product, there is some data saying that those are pretty equivalent. But for most of these, these industrialized processed plant meat alternatives, it's not the same. And that's exactly what they found in this study. So what they had now, they had 30 healthy men age 20 to 34, right? So right away, healthy and young. So you could suppose it might be even worse for people who are overweight, um, have insulin resistance and are older or have absorption problems to begin with, right? It might be even different for that population. So this was a very select population and they had them eat one of four meals and they crossed over. So they were all sort of their own control. And the meals were either um, pasture-raised beef, grain-finished beef, pasture-raised lamb, or Beyond Burger. And to cut to the results, there really wasn't a whole lot of difference in the amino acids in your body from the pasture-raised or grain-fed um, beef or lamb, but there was a significantly lower amount of branched-chain amino acids and essential amino acids and non-proteogenic amino acids. So there was a, a significant reduction in the amount of amino acids detected in the blood after eating the Beyond uh, Burger. So as an example, they state the area under the curve for the essential amino acids was 133% greater in lamb, 123% greater in the grain-fed meat, 75% greater in the pasture-raised uh, meat compared to the Beyond Burger. Now, the other part of the study was looking at appetite and satiety and fullness, and there was no difference among all of those. Um, so that, that was interesting, even though there was a difference in the uh, amount of amino acids. So maybe the satiety of the program, the protein is less related to the actual amino acid absorption. Hard to say, but that, that part did not show a difference. So basically, I think my take home from the study is, is that I want everybody to be aware that protein isn't protein. And we've had the podcast before um, with um, Dr. Peter Ballerstead and Simon Hill talking about 
different ways to um, measure protein quality. Um, and this is just one more, uh, one even more evident about the importance of that. So if you're comparing 30 grams of protein in a Beyond Burger and 30 grams of protein in a steak, your body does not see them the same. So if you're looking to get the equivalent amount of protein, you probably need about a third more protein um, from the, the processed uh, plant-based meat alternative to get the same amount of bioabsorbed, bioavailable, actually useful um, protein in your body, right? So again, it doesn't mean you can't get your protein needs from the plant-based meat alternatives. It just means you have to use more. And I think that's important because that's just sort of truth in advertising where you hear people say, oh, it's the same amount of protein. No, your body doesn't see it the same. And like I said, there are other issues about this that are, are um, still to be debated, hotly debated for sure. But this is one issue that I think is very scientifically clear. And really, you, it's hard to argue with, even if you are a strong supporter of the plant-based meat alternatives, it's hard to argue with a study like this showing that the amino acid uptake is less and the amino acid availability is less. So you need to increase the amount you're eating if you want to get the same amount of protein. All right. Hope this was helpful. If it was, please click thumbs up and subscribe and uh, you'll get all our updates here on Diet Doctor News on YouTube. Thanks a lot, everybody.